Hi, right, it's Saturday morning, 10.05. Let's see what happens, because this thing's got a mind of its own. I'm not going to diagram the PC. I'm just going to hit it. Low high on diagram. Let's see if it works today. Let's see if it works today. I'm not pressing any buttons. Wow, it actually works today. Still only one mega chip RAM. We still have a mega unused chip. So we have something borky with the RAM, which I'm working on. I'm just trying to figure out why it's not booting a standard kickstart anymore. When it was working fine, it just decided after I re-fixed the audio connector last night that it was not going to work. Gotten into that mess yet. Just kind of got up. Shoved some coffee down me, took a dump, and here I am. The entire house smelled like onions this morning because Mona decided to make some tuna with onions and God knows what and just tossed the old onion in the trash and didn't take it out. So my entire house smells like onions. Now they're okay. I've done nothing to this machine. What happened? They were failing yesterday. I literally walked away. And did nothing. And now all the CIAs are okay? This thing is the weirdest board ever. Maybe, because remember I said it was bowed and I let it sit all night? It kind of flattened itself back out? Could I put this kickstart back in? And uh, let's do the experimental. Okay. 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 What in the Sam hell? NTSC's fast, remember, so. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. I do have to replace that socket because that socket is really messed up. It's really messed up. I'm just going to remove diagram. Just going to pick it out of there and put it here. We're going to do Kickstart 2 and see if it green screen still. Low high with CIAs working this morning. I've done nothing, guys. Nothing. Carefully and slowly, not to bump the board or let it freak out. We're going to turn on the Davoom TV that I, again, forgot to turn off last night. So the battery died. We're going to test the Jester's Insanity or whatever it is. Half volume on 204 with an external GoTech on Amiga Test Kit 118 I believe it is. Just go right to audio. Perfect. We did this we did this with uh, I'll just do the, the 500. You're looking for a uniform between your two channels left, two channels right. That's how you can tell you got good RCAs or a good proper op amp. Music will, you know, you can hear it. But to really get the volume equalization, I always use Amiga Test Kit 118. I know there's 120 and on and onward. While it's running, what the hell? All tests passed. 119 NTSC. 59.83 hertz. She's a little bit on the light side. I am in V-Sync instead of tick. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to ever so carefully not bump a CIA just using the tip of my finger. That's what she said. <laughs> just like you told her you would. This is going to use the tick from the power supply, not the video. Low, high. And we're going to fail because I don't have a tick signal on this. Yeah. I don't have a tick signal. I have to use VC. This does not generate a tick signal. It's ATX power supply. If I use an Amiga 3000 power supply, which I had, but it blew up, and I have yet to properly fix it, I did do a recap on it and just didn't work. I'm gonna test. Whoops. I'm gonna test the region of chip because I had some issues with the 
44256K chips, and I still do. We have two bad chips that I do not own. I have one chip. 4MEG, we tested. The 4MEG actually turned out okay. So 2.1, that's good. I have to get this fixed. The chip ram of Boo Boo. One of them is bad, two of them are bad. If you could educate me. Are you stupid or something? Like comment what these mean on these. There's no like D0 through whatever. And that's random on every Amiga model. I'm dumb. I'm still fixing the chip ram on my 3000 tower board that only had it, it messed up. I haven't got to it yet. That's why I'm still fixing it. But I'm working on it. You know, it may, well, I haven't touched it, but I have to work on it. I've just been doing your repairs. All right, that's the first stack. And I am physically stacking a, a RAM chip pin over the pin, matching these pins to these, put them in the chip straightener so it's tight, and make sure it's lined up perfect so this becomes your RAM chip in case one's bad. If it isn't, it's not going to hurt anything. I'll have to pause repeat. So it's this, this, I don't know what the 1631 or 1632 differences are. We have two bed chips now. I don't know. So I'm going to continue on the stacking until it doesn't do that anymore. You know what? Hold on. I do have, I do have 44256Ks. One second. It's been a couple minutes. I have, what is a six? Six in addition to my one. So that's seven of eight chips. That should be good enough, right? Um, normally I would double stack these, but like, if I don't have them all, it's not gonna work. It's gonna reduce it to one mega chip RAM if I do that, and it's on that bad one because it's gonna freak the heck out. So I'm gonna have to remove one chip at a time, which sucks, and replace it. And so we know it has two megs of chip RAM right now. So the originals are going to go up here, and my replacements are going to go, they're a different brand. These are Mitsubishi. Do I get it on the first try? Did we get lucky? No. Two hours later. There you go. There you go. Bottom bank. It was the, it was, it was these two bastards. Where the hell is the camera? Those two bastards. So it was must be like this, 0, 31. Okay, learn something new every day. There we go, 2.4. So, back, back, turn it off. Put those other old chips back in because I don't want to give all my RAM away because, you know, and I need these for my other computer. Sourcing this old RAM is harder and harder and harder. The older it gets, the older we get. Finding working ones. Now remember, these sockets were green. I deoxidated de them. I'm already several hundred bucks into this board with chips. Especially the Denise, the Paula, the sockets, the 48-pin sockets. Two CIAs, a crystal, three sets of ROMs, now RAM. The owner supplied capacitors, which I think are Chinese, but we'll see what we get. There we go. Chip RAM. Fixed. Oh, son of a bitch. Apparently D31 through what the hell ever. It just takes a lot longer and I have so much crammed in here. Putting another tea leaf of information has to force something out. I've forgotten more than most of you remember. What the hell did you just say? Boing ball. It's off my 1.2 workbench. I copied it to 1.3 AVF. So I can just boot it, let it run. You could pause it and slide up and down your screen and all that happy stuff so I don't have a keyboard or left me get M to get my screen back up so uh, the capacitors here that were sent with the board are number one they're incorrect look at the size of that radial cap they're supposed to be half of this size like here like these like this so this cap or this monster truck that won't even fit between the Zorro slots. I'm not doing that. I'm not degrading my quality of work for cheap Chinese capacitors. 
I would rather leave the 30 something year old showies on there because we know they work and the Elmas they're like freaking awesome capacitors but depending on this one's usage which this one looks like she was slapped around it's gonna let her run for a while simple program uses a little bit of RAM and allows me to let this thing run and get some heat all through it kind of like when you get an old car running you don't want to just go out and drag race it you gotta let her idle for a couple hours get all the seals back in order and lube up all the lubrication oil flow and whatever the pile of parts is growing big on her I'm gonna get tired of hearing that so I'm gonna just turn it down or off and let the battery charge I'm gonna take a small breather it is currently 10.53 we'll check back after letting this run for an hour or so and we'll see if the machine's locked up crashed or whatever I'm gonna go upstairs and get some breakfast it's 7 23 p.m. This thing has been rolling all day, boing bowling. I just left it running. Number one, because I said I was going to. Number two, because I actually forgot about it and went upstairs. It just came back down a little while ago. and was like, oh crap, I left that Amiga running. I do need to put that CIA socket in. So as of right now, the unit's working. I've corresponded with the owner and told them it's alive. But I'm not sure about its stability yet because of what we had issues with this morning. So... I'm going to leave the Workbench 2 or Kickstart 204 ROMs in for ease of boot. I'm going to remove the CIA U350 and remove its socket and put a new socket in. We've already fixed the audio. Uh, Denise and Paula have been replaced. The crystal's been replaced. The CIA's been replaced. She's got a chip farm back there. Really wide. But it's alive. That's, that's the most important part to me, is the unit is alive where it was nothing and dead and neglected and just bad off. Let me get her undressed for a second. It's easier if I lift the board up. Um, normally on an Amiga, one of these pins is missing for an indexing. But, yeah, that's a broken off pin on the end. I should be able to extract just that one pin... Also, this is the socket in question with the uh, CIA that's been crazy. And after the CIA is replaced, then I'll make the decision on capacitors. What I may do is do the decoupling capacitors around the power rail. I'll pull off a couple randos, test them against a new one, and see how far gone they are. Based on one, you can kind of get the level of the other. So I'll do one of the 16470s, a 35, and a 1647. And we'll take a peek at how they are and make the decision then whether it actually needs capacitors. But I will replace the power rail decoupling caps because they see the most hits. Still picking wood out of this thing. I don't know what barn or tree this has come from. One issue... I marked the board with an X here where I'm working and I want to show you something. The pins on this are all folded inward. So I'm actually having to snip the legs, the angled legs off of each one of these pins. That's great. I'm just doing it so carefully with a flat blade Lorena aka a flush mount cutter very sharp just so I have something to uh, be able to get a, a, the pin out straight so here's a better angle of the angled pins you see how it's there we go you see how they're kind of angled in and I cut these flush that'll make getting the solder sucker tool uh, on a, a round hole versus trying to fight this bent and I could bend these back up possibly but and then we'll remove it and we'll take a peek at how it looks underneath. 7.47 p.m. Sockets out. Also de-sucked the two on the end. I'll get them out in a second. But you can see there's a little bit of a line of schmutz uh, on the top there. And it's crusty. So as usual, alcohol, cotton swabs. Uh, the blackness up here on this cap. I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's like black crap. That was all underneath of the socket when I shot some deoxid down her throat and gave her the big one. Yeah, so I gotta evacuate this one ground hole right here. So I pulled this much black goop out from those holes, both sides of the Q-tip here. 
cotton swab. I've also evacuated the two holes that were missing. You just stand her up here on the floppy. So here we go. So CIA socket, all clean. That ground plane on the end is open. The two, sorry, the two on the end there are evacuated. And I'm going to have to replace them. They're standard 2.54 uh, spacing pin headers. 40 pin sockets. We're going to do with SIL turn pin for the ROM or CIA sock. I used some 1968 lead solder on that bad boy so she'll hold. It's a little bit lighter on the pins there, but they're in. There you go. Final two. The indexing pin which is not soldered in at all because there's an open hole all the way through the board. Yay! Now, let me get this socket in. Okay, so with that done, we have a new SIL turn pin socket. We have a floppy connector fixed-ish, as long as they're careful with it. New Crystal, new Denise, new Paula. Uh, haven't even been able to do Amber anything. She's doing the op amp and the audio circuit and all that stuff. It's just amazing it functions. On the 3000, I do like to make sure that all my ceramics are not, especially the resistors, are not laying over each other, causing any issues. Okay, enough yapping. Let's put the CIA back in and see if moving this board. Board flex seems to be at a minimum. We are powered on. Let's hook up the ATX and get the, uh, we're on V-Sync for my tick. Original power supply, you want to move that jumper back over. All right, good snap. 20 in. All right, we're ready. Oh, mouse. ATK is in the disk drive. Does it work? Let's let's give it a shot. Let's see. There's our 2.0 ROM screen. Remember, it was 1.4 before. All right. Let's put a disk in, which is ATK. Do, do another CIA check just to make sure that it's doing its thing. If you get an Amiga Kickstart screen, it's a good chance you're okay. ATK. And what I need to do is I need to find a floppy cable, which I have on an Amiga 2000 repair. Two mega chip, four mega fast. All right, good. Uh, let's do CIAs just to make sure we're cool. We are good all across the board. All CIA tests passed. Yay. Graphics. Let's do the graphics. Can we do video? Uh, Denise is looking nice. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. This is a 8373R3, which is the ECS Denise. I swapped it with the ECS Denise. So you can run the OCS Denise. It's just two screen modes. It's no big deal for the three pieces of software that no one might use for ECS. And we're good. I need to test the floppy drive. So let me get a floppy drive and a cable and we'll see how it boots on an actual disc. Okay. We're going to boot Amiga Test Kit 1.6 on floppy. Unplugging the external GoTech all together. Let's see what we get. Low, high. Does this floppy even work? More of our we're on Amiga Test Kit 1.6 with the the old that's not plugged in audio and 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 goodness cool memory two makes chip four makes fast everything's cool we're on floppy I'm gonna turn this off so I can rest this floppy down somehow like this that, that works. I have some discs here of various things. I used to have some demos, but I gave those away. I'm going to write an ADF on the old Workhorse 3000 right there. And uh, write like state of the art. Maybe nine fingers. It's two discs. State of the art on single floppy. And we're going to boot it. Okay, so it's 8.30. That's sitting there idling. The 3000 over here, way in the corner is using Go ADF to write a DMS file to an actual floppy disk because it converts it in RAM automatically. You can also mount ADFs. Uh, you can do that with, you know, 3.2 or better. But this gives you much more flexibility for virtual floppies, ejection of virtual floppies, and 
uh, translation from DMS to all sorts of uh, ADF to and from, make ADFs, all sorts of cool stuff. Bitplan.pl slash go ADF. I registered it. Uh, six US dollars for your name in the title there. Otherwise, it's just shareware, nag screen for 20 seconds, fully functional. Give it a try if you like it. Support the brother. Six dollars, not bad. So we're writing state of the art so I can boot uh, this on floppy disk and let her rip tater chip. There we go. 030 NTSC. She's got to run fast. So I'm going to boot it in PAL via jumper because I can't have the, I don't have the workbench 3 double mouse button thing. I only have boot selection. I just jumpered it in PAL off a jumper. Everything else is NTSC on the board, including clocks, crystals, everything. But look, on a floppy, Mega 3000 that was dead. She lives again. So I'm not watching that again. You've seen it a hundred times. I have state of the art. This is my TC2 cap tester. So we're half web, half Heiko. Turn it on, let her heat up a little bit. I'm just gonna pull a cap out near the front for a general test. Okay, this is the test of the capacitance of this thing. Always wise to drain a capacitor, so just touch them both together. That'll drain them, or touch something metal on it, which will drain it. I need to get this solder off of here a little better. There we go, just so it fits into the tester. Now this tester was like $30 on the e-booger. comes with all sorts of magic things and clips and USB charger. Uh, 3.85 volts, so we're still good. You basically insert this into here. It's got all these different colors, so positive, negative, you just kind of wedge it in there. Important safety tip, make sure you drain your capacitors, it'll damage it, and then you just simply press the button. It'll turn on and test the part. What do we see? This is a 16 volt, 47 UF capacitor. As you can see, we have 48.9 UF, so we're still above we have 1.8% V-loss and 59 ohms of e 0 0.59 ohms ESR. Okay, let's compare that to a brand new, well, a last year's production capacitor 1647 through hole. That's 470. Uh, these are Nichicon 2022 20, productions. God. So this is the same exact capacitor, 1647. Again, I gotta kinda do some crazy, we're gonna have to go long school here because of the long leg. All right, this is a brand new capacitor. What do we get? 1647, focus. 48, 2.1 and 1.0 ohms. So the brand new capacitor is worse off than the old capacitor. Crazy. Again, same, no cuts, no futs, no butts. Put this back in there. Oh my god, lock it down. One zoom and I'll press the power button, no cuts, power button. This is the original cap, focus. 48.21, VLOS 2, 0.74 ohms. So yeah, it's a uh, it's still perfect. Do you want to recap it? I wouldn't. Because these are in the series of, yeah, it wear, I get it. I know about the whole anode, cathode, wear out fuel. But the point is, there's nothing wrong with these caps. Now, as a precautionary, I'm going to go through and replace the five or six that are around the decoupling caps and the one that I just pulled out. Because I don't feel like uh, doing... 41 caps and the ones that I was provided are Chinese and weird positive oh my negative oh, say holding well I'll have to hold it all right here we go on this one can't zoom so I gotta hold it 16470, okay, this is uh, 427, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, 0 0.20, 0 0.21, 0 0.22, 0 0.23, 0 0.24, 0
0.06 ESR. 0.6. This is an incredible cap. Incredible. It's creeping up in capacitance, okay? But, like again, decoupling cap on the power rail, it sees the most abuse of them all. Hence, whoops, why I just dropped everything on the floor. Hence why I'm replacing the decoupling capacitors. 16470s. I try to use Nichicons or a higher quality cap. There are good China manufacturers like Jayco and a couple other ones, but or JWCO. But you're gonna pay for them. I understand why Hertel hates through holes so much. I get it. So here's a 16470 2023 production Nichicon. What do we got? What's the comparison? Yep. 445, 1.1, and 0 0.25. That's a brand new cap. So, I don't think the original one was even bad. Like I said, when you don't need them, you don't need them. Remember, if this thing broke years ago, it wasn't used. It ain't like they, they're not exposed to air. They're not just going to dry up like an old piece of beef jerky in the sun. They're in a sealed environment. They don't dry up until they're used for fuel for recouping the anode layer and the cathode layer and the science that's involved with electrolysis and how power is transferred through. It's, it's, a, it's a math thing. There's a fine line between capacitance fluid, the electrolytics, rejuvenating the wall of the eroding copper thing because it's being used to transfer power and that electrolytic fluid is used to repair that and it's, look up how a capacitor works. You'll, you'll, get, you'll understand what I'm saying when I say math and science. That means I could go into great depth of detail about the subject, but it's stupid and it doesn't matter. Just replace it or don't. And it's good, so we don't. Ain't nobody got time for that. Somebody was playing with caps trying to fix Amber. That's what it was. Craziness. I'm going to put a drop of... Uh, of special oil down the variable trimmer capacitor for amber you will need a ceramic screwdriver to adjustments so there you go you can see we're still good two megs four megs the user can add on additional zip 20 fast ram i do have to test the zorro uh three how am i going to do that we're going to use the live to gotta go faster board by uh Kavanaugh's. this is going in one of my 3000s so it's perfect to test in a 3000 you know my favorite color is purple so he built me one in purple weird how this camera shows it as blue but i know it shows up on film as purple so we're gonna whoa i'm gonna back this up turn this off Insert this in not the top slot because it gets picky with the graphic slot. It is labeled front, okay? Front. So you can't bork that up. Uh, we're going to go in like the third slot. Don't know the condition of these Zoros. Just hitting the button. Letting it boot. This should be 256 megs of RAM, fast RAM, Z3. With the 4 megs of 32-bit fast RAM, Zip20, and the 2 megs of fast RAM uh, chip. If Zorro is working, if you had a Workbench 3 ROM or greater, you would see, there we go, 256, 4, and 2. Zorro works. I don't even need to test it because, holy God, best thing ever for Zorro 3 Amigas. And thank you, Mr. Cavanaugh's, for building this for me in purple. Greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to take a breather for the day. For you guys, it will be probably 0 0.2 seconds. For me... Hopefully a little bit. Hi, welcome to Sunday, 10.43 a.m. I just finished doing the decoupling capacitors. I took amber out and I'm trying to uh, adjust the potentiometer. I'm gonna use a combination of deoxit, a ceramic screwdriver, or as it's called, ceramic aligner tool, bong tai tai yab ta. VC470 is a potentiometer. That is a pain in the babushka. Also the clock chip. So at first I'm going to attempt a phase adjustment because this thing is just jacked. Just trying to get it to turn and loosen and do I get a signal at all? Just moving it back and forth for a second because it was so corroded. I'm not doing any amber repairs on this board because it's too lengthy for what I do is trying to 
get some movement in that thing and see if I can get it back to life. God, that is crunchy. Holy shit, did I get something? Oh my god! I fixed it. <laughs> Alright, that's disabled. Let's try enabled. The phase is off. Phase is off. Thirty-one kilohertz amber. We're not there yet. So I got the RGB section done with amber. We're just trying to do the phase adjustment. I shot some deoxid down VC four seventy. The whole thing is borked. It's there, but it's not. So let's go back to RGB mode. Fifteen kilohertz. Or on the thirty-one VGA plug. Now this is really crunchy. So there's a trimmer pot in the back for phase. But I'm just not, I'm not quite there yet. That's for the 31. Let's uh, adjust the trimmer cap. If you don't have a ceramic screwdriver, the metallic structure is going to touch the ground outside and you're going to get a borked up thing. So I should be doing this on an oscilloscope, but because it's so dirty, I'm barely getting anything. The trimmer cap is just not even happy. Oh, holy shit. Very slight movements. Oh my god. Oh! It's like 180 degrees out. That's amber in 31. I'm slowly adjusting. I don't think this is doing it. And when I say I'm turning this thing slow, imagine crawling across the desert one grain of sand at a time using the oscilloscope with Tristan's blog and it's very sort of precise for myself doing it. Uh, it was frozen in time, rotted shut. And I think that sweet spot I need to be is on a rusted, rotted part. I went in there and just gave her the scrub, but this is the spot it was supposed to be in and I can just barely touch this. If I just tap this, see how it jumps around? That means something's up with that trimmer cap. I have them. And I'm going to put a new variable trimmer cap on and we'll see. And that's my final thing I can do for this. And then she's all slapped on her ass and sent home. It's 10.57 uh, a.m. on Sunday. I've been working on this for the past, f f what, four days now? Three, four days? Yeah, so we're 12, 24, 36, and 3. 36, 37, 38, 39. So we're getting close on hours of maximum devotion. Couldn't find them. Here's the old one, squeaky chair man. Crusty as anything. Here's the replacements. MU Rata. I don't know. It's I had 20 of them. Now I have about 16. It's new and we don't know where it sits. So enabling the amber. Ceramic screwdriver inserted. I like to kind of line it up on the line so I know where I'm at. And I have to just start slowly because I don't know where this one is set. There we go. Slowly, are you coming back up? Hey, how you doing? Okay, I'm gonna hold on this. I'm gonna stick it in the back hole again. Uh. And attempt a horizontal shift. Let's trim her in the back. Horizontal shift. I mean, that's pretty good. It's a little shaky, okay? When you can't, I don't know if you can see it on here, but check this out. So it's just out of phase, so you're gonna see it wiggling a little bit, okay? That's amber enabled. Amber disabled is flipping up. At least you have a 31 kilohertz mode. Amber disabled looks great. RGB we know looks great. That is the most important part of a 3000, is the 31 kilohertz. I'm gonna try the backside adjustment for the horizontal shift, but it doesn't usually clean up that well. The main phase is where you're going to have issues. I mean, you can play with this when you get her home, but my job here is done. So we have a working amber system again. We lost many parts in this endeavor. So I had to use my Super Denise, a Paula, because they, these are toast. Uh, two sets of ROMs, a CIH chip, Two more ROMs, 
So we blew two sets of ROMs and then I gave a, a 2.04 that I had in the stock. I replaced all of the power decoupling capacitors with brand new 2022. It's 2023, yeah, but a year old, better than 35. 2023 production Nichicons around the power rail. I had to put a new CIA socket in there because it was leaking black goop out of the old one. I don't know. I cut her in half when I took her out. Uh, we also put a new clock crystal in because why not? No clocks, no Amiga. We lost two of these 256K. Uh, I'm sorry. I also fixed the RCA connectors in the back, which led me down the rabbit hole of amber and sound and everything else. She's fully functional. Again, the owner can reassemble and upgrade as needed. So another, as you can tell, after all that work, all those parts, and those many hours, another Amiga has been saved. If you'd like to help me continue to do this, consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal tips or whatever you would like. Just simply a like, a subscribe, and just watching these videos, commenting down below greatly helps me keep doing this. It's just a hobby. I am not a business. I'm just an old fat dude in his basement repairing Amigas for you with the help of my supporters, which I cannot express enough gratitude on thanking you enough. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Why do you know from funny, you bastard?